going on everyone? Today's project is the Tiger Cat 52 inch. We're going to change the hydraulic filter and oil and also since we're changing the filter and get that out of the way we're going to inspect the clutch and adjust that because I inspect uh, the clutch and adjust it the same time as I change the hydraulic filter just because everything's out of the way, sort of. So uh, let's get started on this. I use a genuine Skag filter and the reason why I use that is because uh, this filter does not have a bypass. If you buy um, a filter from the parts store, just a regular filter, they have a bypass and the spring compresses and the fluid goes by. Well, in your uh, hydraulic system, you do not want it to bypass and let particles of dirt or debris or metal shavings or whatever to go by the filter and get into the pumps and take the pumps out. So I know they're a little bit extra money, but I'd rather have spend a little bit extra money and not worry about the hydraulic system on that mower. So let's get started on this. So sometime this past fall, I'm not sure where, you can see where this is all bent up. The belt blew off of uh, either the deck belt, actually the deck belt and the drive belt blew at the same time and one of the belts hit the filter and bent it up. I did not change it right away because it was not leaking and I wanted to try and get through the season. So now it's going to be a little bit fun getting that off there because my regular filter wrench is not going to fit that filter because it's all bent up. So first thing I'm going to have to do is pull that drain plug out. And I got just a little pan, a little dish pan underneath. I picked that up from the Dollar Tree I think it was. So it leaves a bit of a mess because I don't want to take this whole bracket off or nothing. So I'm going to do the best I can to get everything on video here. First thing we got to do is take the drain plug out. Since that is slow draining and then I just take off the cap because all we're doing is draining this reservoir. And also this plug has an o-ring on it so we make sure that doesn't have any rips or tears in it. Okay, now with the oil pretty much all drained out of the reservoir, I'm going to put the bolt back in. So that way I don't have oil dripping on me all the way through this rest of the whole thing. So the next fun thing is to get this filter off. Since it's all bent up. Yeah, this isn't any fun at all. All this is doing is folding in. It doesn't really want to come off. There we go. Coming off a little easier than I thought it was gonna. Since we're waiting for the oil to finish draining, we're going to fill up this filter. I was going to wait and adjust the clutch, but I don't want all that oil dripping all over everywhere, so I'm going to finish this off. And this does call for 20W50 motor oil. I just use the store brand motor oil. And 
and you just have to take your time, pour it in slowly. Filter's full, and I gotta make sure and get oil around the gasket. So it makes a good seal on the filter housing. I might have overfilled it a little bit, but hopefully I could get it on or spin it on without it uh, spilling. If it does, it does. Hardest part's getting it started, then it gets easier. What I do is get the filter as tight as I can with my hands, which my gloves are all full of oil, put the wrench on it, and give it a quarter turn. And that should take care of it. I have never had a leak, and then every once in a while it's hard to get back off, but most generally it's not a problem. So the next thing that has to be done is uh, we have to fill this reservoir back up. And, and my, I don't know exactly how much oil is supposed to be in there, I don't remember. But uh, it is supposed to be, the oil level is supposed to be three and a half inches below this filler neck. So we'll just keep dumping in there until it gets close and measure it with a tape measure. That's three full quarts. Let's see where three inches is at. No, I did not measure. Let's see how far we're off. It's touching the oil. So we're at three and a half. It's supposed to be three inches to three and a quarter. Okay, after putting uh, more oil in there, a little over three quarts of oil, Put the sleeve back on there, or in there, so it doesn't slosh out as you're going around hills and stuff, or up and down hills. Put the cap back on. So what you're supposed to do now, after you got all the oil put in the reservoir and everything, you're supposed to drive it back and forth for about two and a half minutes. Well, uh, with the heat going in the garage, and I have to open up the door to do that, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do it another day when I get everything ready to go, or uh, for the next part of the project when I have to turn them over around. So uh, now we're going to uh, tackle adjusting the clutch. So the, the hardest part about this clutch, I don't know if you can see that, is getting into where everything is at. This uh, slot right here, the inspection for the clutch. It's supposed to be 15 thousandths, which that is, and that's really, really loose. So now I have to try and tighten it up and there's more than one of these openings and I just tighten this bolt up here and check this again so it's about three quarters of a turn let's check it and it's too tight. So back it off a little bit. And just a slight drag. So that side is just, let's go check the other side. So this one's gonna be a little tougher because I can't really see anything. Seems like a long ways to go. Yeah, a little too tight.
too loose. That's good. So I, I had to go around and check the clutch gap uh, two more times. And I, by the time, uh, third time adjusting, I guess, uh, it was all pretty much perfect all the way around. And you're supposed to adjust it every 500 hours or annually, whichever comes first, which uh, I just adjust the clutch the same time I uh, change the hydraulic oil and filter. Well, that part of the mower is done, uh, the messy part. I do not have to change the engine oil on this just because I changed it uh, not too long ago, about a month ago I think it was, not even. There's not very many hours on that engine. So uh, in the next couple of videos we're going to be uh, working on this mower because I'm going to go through the whole mower from back to front or front to back, however you want to say, top to bottom. I'm going to pull the tires off, uh, check the brakes, check for any loose bolts, any loose fittings, everything, do the whole thing. And I'll be going over uh, the problems I've had with this mower over the past uh, year and a half, two years that I've owned it. And I guess it's almost been two years. And uh, I'll tell you exactly what I've had problems with. I've had a lot of problems with this mower, but uh, it does what I need it to do. We don't have another dealership with another brand that has a clamshell bagger on it near us. You know, the next nearest one. Uh, with the bagging system that I would like would be a walker and that's I think the nearest one's five hours away so that's not going to happen and uh, X mark is the next one that's got sort of a clamshell bagger that's two and a half hours away so that's not going to happen either so I'm kind of stuck with skag for what I got so that is going to be pretty much my video for today uh, we will be going over this mower uh, from top to bottom front to back just to get everything uh, set and ready to go for spring I don't want to have any single problems in the spring because we're going to be behind when we get started. And I just want to have everything ready to go and make sure there's no surprises when we get started. So I thank you for watching and subscribing. If you can check out the links in the description box below, we greatly appreciate it. Everybody have a good evening, and we will see you on the next project.